What's the difference between frogs and toads? Today, we find out. Although they are similar in many ways, and actually toads are a type of frog, just it's not that all frogs are toads, there are a few differences between the two that are more obvious than others. So we're going to start with those obvious differences, and then we'll dive into the less obvious differences between frogs and toads. Generally speaking, frogs have a much longer body and longer legs that are built for leaping, like that, whereas toads have a much shorter squatter body with shorter legs that are built for hopping and crawling. So just remember that frogs leap and toads hop. That's one of the main differences. Second, let's look at their skin. Frogs have consistently moist skin all around their body, whereas toads have drier skin, or some people would uh, describe it as warty skin, although it is a myth that you will develop warts on your skin by touching a toad. That is completely false. Next, let's compare their eyes. A frog's eyes are much more bulbous than a toad's eyes. Toad's eyes are quite a bit more recessed into their skulls, and that's because situated behind their eye is a poison gland called a parotid gland. And by the way, as I'm editing and doing further research, I am now realizing this gland is called a parotoid gland, not a parotid gland. So ignore me in this video mispronouncing it. It's a parotoid gland. And these secrete a poison that irritates the mouths of predators, which is the toad's defense mechanism. Frogs, on the other hand, do not have those glands, so to make up for them, they have larger eyes that give them a larger field of vision. They actually have nearly a 360 degree field of vision that they utilize without even having to turn their head, and that allows them to see predators better than the toads can. Another difference between frogs and toads is that you can't see this on the outside, so I'm going to use some pictures to illustrate it better for you and give you some visuals. But inside of a toad's mouth, there are no teeth whatsoever, whereas inside of a frog's mouth, there's two different types of teeth. The maxillary teeth are a, is a small row of teeth that lines the outer edge of their upper jaw. In addition to the maxillary teeth, frogs also have vomerine teeth, which are two small clusters of projections that are in the roof of their mouth. They basically look like two enlarged teeth. Both the maxillary teeth and the vomerine teeth help frogs capture and hold on to their prey. Let's look at their skin again while we talk about their preferred habitat, which is another difference between frogs and toads. Frogs always have wet skin because they absorb water through their skin to rehydrate themselves. They also will extract the oxygen from the water on their skin. Additionally, frogs are able to rid themselves of CO2 using that same process, but in reverse. Because of this, frogs need to keep their skin continuously wet, so they prefer to live near bodies of water. On the other hand, toads have much drier skin, and that's because instead Instead of relying on the absorption of water and extraction of oxygen from the water, they will instead get their oxygen from the air by using their lungs. When a toad expands its throat, it creates a bit of a vacuum and it sucks in air through its nose into its throat and then that air gets pushed down into its lungs and after the oxygen is extracted and uh, exchanged with CO2, that CO2 goes back into the throat of the toad and they close their throat which pushes that air back out of their nose. So every time a toad moves its throat in and out, it's actually taking breaths of air. Frogs can also breathe using this method, but they will only use their lungs to breathe when they're out of water. When they're in the water, all oxygen is extracted from the water itself through their skin. Because toads are not reliant on water to absorb through their bodies, instead they just use their lungs, toads will live further away from bodies of water, but they will come back for breeding purposes. When it comes to breeding, toads will lay their eggs in strings, but there are a few species of African toads that actually hold on to their eggs within their body and they maternally incubate them until the babies hatch into small toadlets. We believe that these few species of toads evolved this adaptation because sources of water in those areas of Africa are few and far between. So in order to better control their eggs humidity and hydration levels, they just incubate them themselves and then they can make sure they're constantly wet. Frogs, however, will lay their eggs in large clusters in the water. 
Sadly, amphibian populations, including frogs and toads, are declining at an alarming rate. This is because of habitat loss, pollution and chemicals, and man-made structures. Habitat loss is an obvious one. Humans are transforming native wetlands into buildings and parking lots and other structures. And with a lack of wetlands, which are essential to the reproduction of frogs and toads, they're not able to reproduce. In regards to pollution, the frogs are able to absorb not only clean water through their skin, but also polluted water. So pollution is actually causing frogs to absorb those chemicals and toxins into their bodies, which is killing them directly. Chemicals are affecting both frogs and toads in the form of fertilizers on our lawns. People will spray them on the grass and it lingers behind and toads either walk through it and get it on their bodies themselves or those chemicals are seeping through the soil and affecting either like the worms that salamanders even will eat and then it poisons the salamanders or it affects the amphibians themselves again in the soil. The same goes for pesticides and herbicides. So if you want to help help amphibians in the wild, just don't use pesticides, herbicides, or fertilizers on the plants in your yard because it's killing these guys. And finally, although some man-made structures actually are made to the benefit of some amphibians, for example, houses provide a vertical surface for the tree frogs to sit on and lights inside of the house attract moths to the glass doors or windows, so they actually can come right up and they have a good food source at our houses. However, most man-made structures do not benefit amphibians. I'm talking things like large buildings and parking lots and roads especially. These impervious surfaces, which are surfaces where where water doesn't seep through and get absorbed easily like it does in just plain old dirt. These impervious surfaces trap salamanders underneath so they can't uh, resurface as easily as they would on a normal ground. And while amphibians cross over them to travel from one wetland to the other, they are crossing over roads quite often and they get hit by cars. Another structure that is not good for amphibians are window wells actually. They just are, you know, walking around and they fall into these window wells which are like death traps to them because a lot of them, although tree frogs could probably climb their way out, toads, salamanders, and many other like true frogs are unable to get out of window wells so they either de become dehydrated and die or they starve and they die. So if you want to help amphibians in the wild and you have window wells, the best thing to do is to check those window wells the morning after a rainy night because rain increases their activity levels usually because of reproductive habits and that makes them more likely to encounter window wells outside overnight. So you can actually just make it a habit to check window wells once a day. It doesn't hurt because they'll be active on non rainy nights as well. So if you see any, just pick them up and let them go and you will be saving their lives. You might even find reptiles in the window wells as well that you can also help. Another thing you can do to avoid all of this altogether is get a window well cover to prevent these animals from falling down inside. So those are some ways you can help amphibians in the wild. And of course, those are some of the main differences between frogs and toads. This toad is our big female. We use her in programs occasionally. Her name is Neville when I do Harry Potter themed programs. And she's been a star in several of our videos before. And this is a gray tree frog that belongs to nature. We borrowed him from the outdoors for this episode. Oh, you're just getting comfy in my hand. You're adorable. You've been a pain to work with though for this video. Oh, bloopers are incoming. Anyway, we are going to let this little cutie go and we've been actually leaving our porch light on to attract some moths so he can have a nice big meal as a thank you for your cooperation in this video. So we'll let him go and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, buddy. Here you go. Here you go. Go eat lots of bugs. Thank you for your help frog have a more oh come back that work okay yeah all right just like that just <laughs> they like leap that. just like that don't oh. lick me she licked you yeah uh -huh. um oh my god not under the fridge frogs can breathe using this method oh you're so sticky thank you and everything's been recorded all righty oh don't <laughs> jump on her oh my gosh all right additionally oh my Stay here. Yeah, I think that sounded fine. Oh. Really? Don't jump on he a frog. He was comfortable. Yeah, I saw him. He was really cute. In. Two, the CO. Uh, we believe. Uh, really? We're just switching? Switch I guess we'll switch. Nope. Nope. Don't corner the fridge. Frogs again have this consistently. Uh, 
Frogs have to make up for their lack of poison glands. That was really cute. Oh, what? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what, me? I was cute? No, not you, the frog. You scared her. Oh, don't even think about it. You don't either. And they also extract oxygen. Oh, really? You he are. was really cute. Yeah, he was. And you went and You're a big pain. Yeah, she is. You're the one doing this. Yeah, you're freaking out the frog. Toads will let, oh my gosh, we <laughs> collided. <laughs> uh, just hold you like this. I have two vomerine teeth, which are, ugh. And in addition to the maxillary teeth, uh, nope, don't go in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Some amphibians like tree frogs, they pervert, or, um, they pervert. Uh. And finally, although some man-made structures, it seems like, oh, he's pooping. Pooping frog. Do you have to poop right now? Why is everything poop when we film? That is quite the poop. Damn, sorry, dude. Pinch it off already. There you please. go. Did you want to put it over the garbage pail? <laughs> <laughs>